Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome to What Up Clay. This channel we talk about all kinds of things and whatever comes across my desk. Today we're going to talk about a brushless motor that I just purchased. Um, these motors just came out. This is the Surpass Rocket uh, version 6. They just uh, they were just released this month. Um, they were advertised that came out with it uh, last month, which was April. Um, uh, Surpass is known to make some excellent excellent motors I just got this thing in I'm very excited to get it open so uh, I already took the cellophane off it so I'd spare you guys the time of taking care of that um, on the uh, again this is the uh, the stock spec 17.5 uh, by surpass hobbies um, it meets all roar and all the other racing rules out there um, Nothing else fancy about the box. So let's go ahead and open it up. See what it looks like inside. Alright, so what they said they've done to this, they said they've changed the rotors on them, made them more, uh, made them heavier. Uh, this right here is the heavy version. <clears throat> rotor that's in this one here for uh, off-road racing uh, they have a light version that's designed for higher rpms more directed towards street racing um, again this right here is for off-road racing this, the uh, time is set to 30 degrees I don't know if I, that's not tuned I'm sure I'm sure that's just a basic setting they put them all on um, oh wow that uh, so the, uh, as you can see, that magnet is pretty strong. It's not easy. It's probably one of the tightest ones I've ever spun. Um, the rotor on this, the numbers right here, it's uh, C78125. This is very, I like the machining on this. It's very open. However, that could be a problem if you're racing carpet. Um, you get a lot of fibers and carpet dust inside. I'd highly recommend that you bring a <clears throat> some type of compressed air or something with you. <clears throat> um, the screws on this, I bet they are metal. It didn't say anything about him. Yeah, so the screws on this are metal. They're not titanium. Um, the solder tabs here are really beefy, extremely beefy. Those are pretty thick. It's going to make it easy to put on a tunalizer because you don't have that the can going up underneath the tabs to short out. But speaking of tunalizers, what do you say we go ahead and uh, put this thing on the tunalizer and see what this thing can do? We'll uh, take and tune it and see what we can get on the uh, find the sweet spot for it and just to see how it compares to others. All right. Okay, I have it all hooked up to the tunalizer made by Hobby Wing. Let's go ahead and run an auto test on this. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention about this motor, what's nice, is it has a sensor port on the very, very back as well as the top, which makes it real nice for when you're, uh, you have know, cramped space back here. You still get your sensor port in there, your cable in there, no problem. You can install it here instead of the back. Um, it's a very nice feature. And they have rubber caps on it, keep the dust and dirt, grime, stuff like that out of it. So, all right, let's go ahead and run a uh, run an auto test on this and see what the factory settings are. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> yeah, it's in about uh, about 29.6 degrees of timing from the factory. 2808, 2.33 amps. Now that's pretty low. That means that we have a lot of a uh, that we can make a bit of adjustments on the timing on that. Let's see what else we got here. End belt deviations 1.2. Um, yeah, see that here if you. 27.7 I mean it's 
some will say that's good um, which it is but on the higher end side this right here is considered to be uh, I would say considered to be kind of on the too far off um, there is quite a bit of play in the shaft motor so maybe we can put some shims on that and that clean that up a bit too Let's see what um, motor asymmetry is a 3.8 hall signal deviation 3.8 it's not too bad motor temperature well it's room temperature right now so let's go ahead and see what rpms this thing runs at Well, not too bad. It's running about uh, 21,000 RPM, so that's pretty good at only 30 degrees. Yeah. So let's go ahead and mess around with the uh, with the timing on this. See if we can get this thing. Uh, probably try to set the timer around 5.5. The sweet spot on these things are usually between 5 and 6 amps. Um, I found that. Uh, around five to five and a half is, is the best because after that you'll notice a big big jump in amperage power after five and a half amps so let's go ahead and uh adjust the timing i'll adjust it by five degrees each time okay i adjusted timing about five degrees um let's go ahead and run a test and see what it does now All right, 2.82 amps, 29.19 uh, kilovolts, yeah, about 35 degrees. Parameters on the back side, let's see, pretty much the same, dead as long as the same. Um, got a little bit warmer, 90 degrees before it was uh, about 86. So let's go ahead and check the RPMs on this. Looks like we gained about 700 RPMs. Um, let's go ahead and uh, adjust the timing higher. Looks like we still have a bit to go. We're still less than 3 amps. 2.8 amps. So we have a bit to go. Let's see what else we can do. Okay, I bumped it up by another 5 degrees. <clears throat> let's go ahead and. Uh, do a motor test. All right, 3.56 amps, 3,002 kilovolts, and bells about 43 degrees. Let's see what we have on the back side. Uh, rotor symmetry got a little bit better. Hall signal a little bit better. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, run a manual test here. See what the RPMs we can get on this thing. Yeah, 
That looks like we're getting about four, 400 RPMs on that one. Let's uh, go ahead and bump it up a little bit more and see if we can get a little bit more out of it. Okay, I have it set to somewhere around 50 degrees. My guess is that we're probably going to go over voltage now because uh, the last one was pretty, getting up there pretty good. The the kilovolts and the RPMs, we weren't really gaining much much momentum, but let's go ahead and give this one a try and see what we have. All right, we have, yeah, we're at 6.18 amps, uh, 32.64 kilovolts, 52.8 degrees on the end bell, on the timing. So, yeah, we went over our sweet spot. So, let's see what the other numbers are, 1.3, 2.1, 2.5, temperature 99, yeah, we definitely went over. Let's see what uh, RPM rain we're getting out of this. But one thing I've noticed is uh, it's pretty torquey. Um, when I blip the throttle, when I was playing with it, it uh, you actually see the motor jolt a little bit. I haven't had that happen to any of my other motors. So, let's see what happens here. Yeah, 23,892, makes about uh, 20, 29,000 RPMs, or 24,000 RPMs. Yeah, it's getting a little high. Let's go ahead and uh, back it off. Uh, let's do about 47 degrees. I bet that right there would be pretty much the, the sweet spot. Let's give that a try. Okay, so... I backed it up a couple of degrees. Um, let's go ahead and uh, try and see how we're see how we're sitting right now. Okay. Wow, that's a big difference. So we're at forty nine point nine degrees uh, on timing. The last test I did, we were at 52.8. So just uh, three degrees off. And we went down over one amp. The amperage last time was 6.22, we're at 4.88. So yeah, about 50 degrees would definitely be the, the best um, timing position for this one. Going to take a look at the rest of the settings. Um, yeah, they're basically the same. Let's see what type of RPMs we're getting on this bad boy. Yeah, we got, uh, I think it's peaked at about 23,400. Yeah, about 23,400. Um, that's pretty much the best we're going to get out of this motor before we burn it up. Sitting right about 5 amps. So, there you have it. Uh, the Surpass motor. The, uh... Timing on it that I got out of this particular one is uh, is set at about 50 degrees. Um, again, this is a very very torquey motor. I mean, I'm still it's still stiff to turn. It's not due to any friction or anything like that. It's just the magnetic strength on this thing is very very strong. Um, my guess is you can gear this. Uh, Get this a little higher, put a little taller gear on it 
to uh, get more speed and uh, or keep it the way it is and get some really good launching power off it. But yeah, um, I'm pretty impressed with this motor. Um, impressed with the numbers on it. Impressed overall. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you like it, please uh, like, subscribe. And if you don't like it, subscribe anyways, just uh, so you can make fun of me. However, I did just purchase a Phantom Helix RS as well as a Trinity slot machine. I just got these two in also. I got them to compare with the uh, just with the uh, the surpass motor here to see how these compare. Uh, these two right here are probably more of the most popular. Definitely the slot machine is the most popular one out. These are all the same um, models, uh, such as these are just the stock specs. They're not the team specs. They're not the work specs. They're not the the special um, tuning. Nothing's been done with these things. They're just the $105, $110, something like that with these cost. Uh, keep them all right there on the same playing field. So, again, uh, if you want to see the, the results of these, uh, like, subscribe, and uh, also I'll be doing more. I'll take this motor here and I'll uh, tune it. I'll do uh, change the bolts, the screws out here, put some titanium ones in. I'll put some ceramic bearings in there. And, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what type of difference it makes. All right, guys. Um, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.